1948 Hoffman AM FM TV radio combination part two this will be a Black Friday bonus video and I think I'm gonna try and do these bonus videos every Thursday at least up until Kwanzaa if you got deep enough into part one you'll remember that in diagnosing the AM FM receiver portion of this TV we came into silver mica disease or SMD in this IF can and I took the can apart and I hollowed it out I cut the capacitors out which were actually arcing and we could see the arcing visibly through the bottom and I've seen that a couple times so there are the mica capacitors right there in that plastic and that's right where it was arcing and you can see it's burnt right down in there wow so it was arcing it was arcing across between the two mica capacitors yeah I just cut them all out with a pair of dikes they're gone and I tacked a couple 110 picofarads on the bottom and they were way off because I ended up screwing the trimmer uh, core adjustment all the way in okay I tacked a couple 120s across there expected to be released from the hospital in the next few days. The 16-year-old shooter died yesterday from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Now that the uh, Saugus High School shooter is dead, we may never know what motivated him to go on that killing spree, but there may have been some clues. So what we're going to do today is we're going to properly identify what capacitor values go on this. I know a lot of guys say, well, just use around 100 on am well that's not the right way to do it so we're just going to do a quick video here a black friday thursday release kwanzaa special and we're going to identify exactly what value these capacitors are and it's actually quite easy these are the capacitors i'm talking about which are integrated into the if can so we want to identify the value these are almost never published on any type of documentation it seems like the only company that did that was zenith because i believe they made their own if transformers but a lot of these were sourced from different companies so the manufacturer drawing the schematic didn't really know the value so the first thing we want to do is we want to back this back out to about where it was and i'll tell you it was out probably A good 12 millimeters I'm gonna use a magnifying glass and see if I can see a mark on the the, the uh, screw there where it's dirty or clean and you can definitely see on the screw there where it was sticking out of the coil form and it's all dirty so I need to go back in about two millimeters and I'll I'll be in the right spot Ideally, when you get silver mica disease, you never want to turn the cores because presumably they were in the place they should be when the thing was designed or originally aligned. So we want to try and get the cores back to as close as possible and then get the right capacitors. Same thing with the top. I didn't move the top that much, but you can see uh, where it's shiny, it needs to go down. These are 425 ceramic trimmer capacitors. They are 40 to 200 picofarads. I'm going to tack them across the bottom. The cores are adjusted about back to where I believe they were before I tampered with it. Okay, there they are installed. Now some people will say, when you have the IF transformer out, just measure the inductance of the coils and then use math to calculate it out based on the IF frequency. Well, that's complex and it might work in theory, but it's not going to work as fast and as simple 
and as good as this is because you have tunable cores and who, who knows how close the alignment was before you took it apart or if you threw the alignment off. And the other thing with this radio, we don't know what the IF frequency is. I don't know what it is. There's nothing anywhere that says, is it 455, 465, 262? We can guess it's 455 or 465, but this this thing is kind of old before all that was standardized. And this is a little bit different of a circuit than you usually see in a standard All-American 5. So we're going to go with this method, and next thing we do is fire it up. Okay, this is FM, and this is the AM trimmer. So you can see that even though these are AM, they still affect the FM because they're in series. The right way to do this is to inject the IF frequency like you're going to do an IF alignment. Let's just say it's 455, we don't know. And then you're going to peak these, and then you're going to put a fixed value in and then go back and peak the coils and realign it. And you'd want to do all the IF transformers, not just the offending one, but just for entertainment's sake, let's see where we get. So we'll start here on AM. On and off showers lingering into the start of your Thursday as well before we dry things out. 60s and 70s back Friday and the sunshine returns for the weekend. With Southern California's most accurate and dependable forecast, I'm CBS2 meteorologist Danielle Gersh. Fan X1070 News Radio. The yeah, rain is, uh, we see it on the um, radar right now, literally over downtown. It's like saying, hello, 10. 110, 101, 5. We're all over you right now, so we'll be getting more from uh, Jen uh, throughout the morning. Another update from her coming up in uh, a little less than 10 minutes. 918, continuing comprehensive coverage of the impeachment hearings. Now has been extended for an hour for the questioning. This after just a blockbuster key witness either threw the president under the bus or cleared him, depending on who you ask. Craig Figner's been following this closely for us this morning. Craig, what you got? Uh, there's a lot to take in here. The ambassador Sondland just testified that he was trying to to get to the bottom of the delay in financial aid to the Ukraine, told the lawyer for the Republicans, he eventually got in a phone call to President Trump. Why don't you tell us, what, what did the president uh, say to you on September 9th that you remember? There were so many different scenarios floating around as to what was going on with Ukraine. So rather than ask the president nine different questions... I have to bend this one around a little bit. So now that made it weaker, so we probably want to go the other way with it. Oh, that killed it. Very touchy. Pretty close. Okay, I got it pretty good. It's better than it was with the hundreds. Or 110s. Basically on this one, since I'm not using a 455, I kind of had to rock the tuning back and forth and adjust that one for a peak between the two and find the peak. And basically that's because it's this one right here. So it's being affected by the tuning capacitor. So now the thing is, is pull them out and measure them. So it picks up Limbaugh, so what else is there? Limbaugh, sports, 
Oh, we have music stations. That's right. This is L.A. We have L.A. oldies. I keep forgetting. Okay, hear those static bursts? I believe that's the other IF can starting to arc inside. That's what silvered mica disease sounds like. Looks like it's getting ready to rain. Let me pull these out of here. We'll measure them and be done. Amazingly, this little thing is super accurate with small value capacitors and I've tested a whole bunch of stuff on it and verified it. So this is the top one. Let's see what it measures. hundred and six picofarads. So I had put I think a 110 or a 120 and the difference of like 10 picofarads is the difference between that thing all the way in or all the way out. Okay here's the bottom one. 104. So I'm going to assume that this thing probably had two 105 picofarads in it. This one is real critical. I mean one or two picofarads is a huge difference in the sensitivity. Now of course you can adjust the core to a certain point, but the capacitor is much more sensitive to value than the core. Would just using 100 picofarads work? Yeah, it would, but it wouldn't be ideal. It wouldn't be peak performance. Your Limbaugh wouldn't come in at full quieting. You always want to try and do it like this. And you could just leave these on the bottom. These are, you could buy these for a dollar a piece. So instead of screwing with anything, just put four of these on the bottom of the radio. And align these and leave the cores alone.